Hi! Today we're doing a simple color grading in Blender Video Sequence Editor and you don't need coffee for this, but it's helpful. There are different ways on how to do a color grading in Blender. I think my method using modifiers is pretty simple for beginners and also applicable to all sorts of movie strips and effect strips. Let's go. Surprise! First you need to open Blender, but Maybe you want to watch my video on how to set up Blender for video editing first. I mean, they have a basic video editing mode, but I have my own setup that I use because I do keyframing and all sorts of stuff. And there are all the rendering settings and information you need to produce videos for YouTube in that tutorial. So maybe check it out first. Now we're in the main view and I'm just going to drop this video file in here. That's me just doing stuff in this room. And let's also remove the audio for minimum awkwardness. Done. And I'm going to navigate to the end of the strip, press page down to go to the end of the strip and then one frame to the left and press control end. So I have my range for the whole thing set to 21 seconds. Because every time you press home, you zoom into everything that you own in your video sequence editor. And if I set the end here and I press home, then it will zoom to a larger range, which I just don't need. Control end and let's do this. All right, so I usually don't edit the modifiers that I use for the color grading in the movie strip that I have. You can copy them from strip to strip if you have modifiers, like let's say you, right, you go to the video sequence editor menu and then you go to the modifiers tab here. Like there's general strip preferences, tools, modifiers, and proxy settings, which in my case, oh, why is there 100%? I don't need that. So you can add a strip modifier here, like a white balance, which would be the first one to always do. And then if you set the white balance to, let's say some yellow, you could copy that value to, let's say you have another strip here, right? You select them both. You can copy the whole modifier to the selected strip and then you can replace or append all the modifiers. But it really doesn't make any sense to do that in a movie strip if you can also do it in an adjustment strip. So let's remove this and I press Shift A, Adjustment Layer. I can extend it pressing E and now I have this adjustment layer that does nothing. Oh, the green part is just my bumper in the beginning. I have these bumpers so I can just bump up my modifiers and strips and everything against them. So they're always starting at frame zero. So now here's, here's me holding my coffee cup, right? Like this is a good position. Let's put a marker there. And then here's the gray jacket because I want to show you how to handle gray tones since in a good color grading, all your black tones, gray tones and white tones should look the most natural and if you have achieved that then you can tweak all the other colors or let's just say spectrum because what we're doing here is usually not bound to like one wavelength you're not handling monochromatic white at any point now i'm going to cut the strip here and then also here where i handle my hair so because then i can show you how to deal with uh, too blonde, weird looking, orangey hair. Very annoying. And then there's my gray jacket. All right, yeah, and this is the beginning. So backspace to remove the gaps. I think this is okay as a manual example. So let's do the first one, right? You wanna select your adjustment layer and then, as I said, add a white balance. This is always the first thing that you do. And you can just set the white balance by clicking into the color field and then select the dropper or color picker. And then you go somewhere where you have an, a normal white, a boring ass white wall. Not my face and it's going to be green because my face is a little bit red. And mind you, if you have now picked your face to, to white balance on, I mean, you could do that on your teeth, you know, and then you have like white teeth, but everything else is just slightly blue. Now, as you can see, the whole image is already tinted a little bit greenish. Let's, let's do another extreme, like with the closet here. Oh uh, no, that's not so good. Oh yeah, let's tune it down a little bit. Okay, now you can see that it's slightly blue. Now if I pick 
the color in this white and I'm thinking, oh, I'm just going to adjust to this white then. It's adjusting to blue because the color that the picker sees is the already modified color. So if you want to avoid that, you could just hide the white balance modifier. You don't have to hide the whole strip by pr pressing H and Alt H to reverse that, by the way. You can deactivate it here and then you can go and pick your color again, but you won't see immediately if it worked. So now let's take a look. This looks way more natural, doesn't it? But now we have to adapt the brightness. So we click again into this little color field and then you can adapt the brightness because you don't want to swallow any highlights, especially then that those will be flattened or it will look weird or too bright. All right, so now the white balance is almost done. You can tweak that later too, if it's not to your liking. And the next modifier that should be added is a curves modifier. So you go here to the curves. By the way, there is a tone map already, which is kind of a color grading, but I don't recommend using it because it's not very intuitive. And it also doesn't work great on slow machines. In fact, if you have a slow machine and your white balance is kind of okay, I recommend to only use the curves because that will process fastest or the hue value modifier. But you know, that's not as intuitive to handle as the curves, but depends on your experience with other like photo editing software and so on. So let's add a curves modifier here. What is a little bit annoying about the video sequence editor is how this is so tiny. I mean, you could go control enter and make it bigger, but then you don't have a preview unless you put it in the back of this video sequencer, which is kind of weird and looks stupid. So let's not do that. Let's go back and edit it here. Just so you know, I'm not making this video smaller to annoy you. I'm making it smaller. So this part is bigger. Now the curves, you can do whatever you like, but I like it best if it is extending horizontally, which means that if you take your little handle here, the curve will automatically do this horizontal cutoff, which is very handy if you want to cut off the highlights or the lowlights, which you might want to do if you want to do a cinematic color grading. Or also if your skin is very shiny, then you can cut off these little spots. But let's just say I want to flatten out this door in the back a little bit. I mean, this image is a little bit too bright already because I'm wearing this shirt. I just filmed this right now. So it doesn't have a good contrast. So I can show you how to easily flatten a boring white wall in the background because for instance, can you see this door handle right here? I can flatten that out just using this curve. And then the door handle is basically swallowed by the white surface of the wall, which in my opinion looks a little bit better and less distracting. And I mean, I have this cute little bookshelf here, which I don't want to get rid of, but sometimes I wish I could do that with that because you know, stuff in the background is sometimes it's just a bit annoying, but that's your style, I guess. So anyway, you can do that. I find it handy when I want to cut off the highlights, and then I'm going to go for a basic S curve. So the low lights, I will also cut them off a little bit and how much really depends on how dark your image already is. All right, so this doesn't need to be much brighter, but usually you can go a little bit like this, right? So let's do this. And the closer you stay to the middle, the more raw does it look. Raw does not necessarily mean it looks natural because the human eye is just used to these film-like curves and these cinematic curves. And so if you see anything in the movies and you think it's looking quite natural, it's not. None of it is. Not doing color grading is a faux pas. You always need to do color grading. Like otherwise your video is lame. Now you don't need so many, like especially the one in the middle is not handy. So I'm going to delete, delete this. And if you have a modifier below that, there's usually this little X in the upper right corner. And I constantly mistake this little X off the next modifier for the node deletion X and then delete my modifier. And then I'm annoyed. And I might want to extend this a little bit to the right because I want it a little bit darker. This looks okay. A little bit too contrasty, I guess, but I mean, it's not that great of footage. This is like just from my phone, but you can already see the difference. What you can also see here is that the closet that is not very tidy in the back has a little bit of a blue tint and you might want to get rid of that, you know, because like the blue tones are usually just in the low lights and you can't see them unless you tune down the low lights. This is just a natural occurrence if you have 
a rather yellow white balance and you can't do anything about it other than take them out of the low lights specifically or take them out of the whole picture. I am going to show you how to take the blues out of the whole picture. The way to do that just specifically to the low lights would be to use curves as in you can go here to the curves and go to the blue curve and then you could tune down the blue lights <laughs> but you see you really have to handle that carefully or it will look off and because your eyes tend to adapt to different lighting situations even if you're not in them you're just editing them you will get sort of color blind or white balance blind and at some point you can't even tell anymore oh is it too red is it too blue i don't know and then you look at it like five years later and you think like that was a shitty color grading which is why i prefer the hue correct modifier because in this hue correct modifier you can modify everything in a very fine-tuned manner and I find that super handy for beginners. So either trust me bro or don't. If you want to reduce the redness in your face you can go slightly down with this node here but do it on the other side as well and you can copy the coordinate by just hovering over it and pressing ctrl c and then you go to the other node and you press ctrl v and then they meet where they're supposed to. Now I like to add in a few extra nodes here so I can fine tune this. And as I said, unless I wear something blue, I will turn down the blues just a little bit. And also the magenta and the greens, because as somebody who wears glasses, if I have a ring light on or some other light source that is reflecting off of my glasses, there will always be some green and magenta in my glasses, which looks stupid. So I might want to turn that down. Turning down the red a little bit, unless you're a woman and you want red lips because if you overdo that you will just look lifeless but apart from that it comes in really handy if you want to remove blemishes in a natural way just keep it smooth if you spot reduce the red you will get weird looking gray freckles in your face which goes for any color by the way so this has to be a curve that is as smooth as possible if we go down with the blues here you can see that they vanish in the back where my closet was a little blue. Can you see this? Also like the green. Yeah, you can see it in the door here. It's not super obvious, but let me show you my untidy closet. Yeah, this is a bad example, but we're going to do the cardigan next so you can see it because it usually makes an image look more classy and more high end especially if you are filming any kind of gear like a phone or yeah I don't have a camera I only have a lens cap but if you are filming any kind of technical gear that is traditionally black and you want it to look more high-end just take out the blues out of the low lights and all this black is going to look classy and the yellow I haven't edited it much here because it doesn't seem too annoying and I also have this off-white shirt on so I'm not going down with the yellow too much and also not with the green because you know I have this green cup here but a lot of greens usually are more influenced by what you do with the yellows because there's just a lot of the yellow in there and not just the pure green. So let's go to the next part and see my hair. Okay. Now my hair actually does not look super yellow in this example. I'm going to do what I showed you before, which is copy these modifiers to the next strip. Yeah, looks better. So if you had a lot of yellow hair, you could go down with the yellow here and just reduce this a little bit. And it really depends on your hair color, but you have to go fairly far to the left, which is why I need those additional notes to maintain the red and also make it smooth. So you can see how my hair is graying out a little. But I don't like this look with this particular footage so I'm going to take it back so it stays natural because if you take out too much yellow and red again you will just look kind of dead. But take a look at the cardigan now. I might just uh, move this over here. All right now take a look at this cardigan that I'm holding up. You can see how it's bluish. You can re reduce the blue a little bit more because really there's not much in his image that is blue and you can go down as much as you like unless you have a lot of weird contrast because of it as in if your image is naturally quite yellow for instance and then taking out all the blue makes the yellow look weird in contrast with the neutral gray but I mean if you have 
well-lit footage, that should not happen. Always white balance your camera. And by the way, pro tip, do a manual white balance before you start filming and maintain that throughout the footage, especially if you're doing it like me and you're filming indoors. And yes, sunlight can be very annoying. And if you don't have artificial lighting that you can control, it might change, but it's still better than having the white balance shift because you move in the frame and then it's just weirdly shifting around. You don't want that. You want one white balance that you can normalize to and then all the edits can be based on that value and you can tweak them more easily. So if you have like a constant lighting situation, you should always pick a constant white balance. And even if it's not super constant, it's still better. And if you go outside, actually I do recommend doing the automatic white balance as long as you have a good camera because that usually works. Just be careful in case of going to a forest because then everything is green or if you are indoors, you know, then you have to white balance to the wall unless the wall is green or pink or I don't know. <laughs> All right, so here's my cardigan. And again, let's take a look. It's bluish. That looks kind of weird and cheap. And so if I apply the hue correct, it is more natural gray. I like this look better. And now let's uh, see how it looks when you remove all color grading. That was the original footage. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, we're gonna go with this Instagram filter look. So I got a lot of yellow in the back because not all my walls are just perfectly white and like the door has different whites in it as well. <laughs> I don't know why, ask my landlord. But this is the best probably you as a beginner will be able to do and it will already enhance your footage and your video. So try to get used to do a color grading and once you're able to work with keyframes in this little curve editor that I have over here, you might even be able to adapt certain values. For instance, you could add a brightness contrast modifier here and then you could keyframe the brightness value in case the light is flickering in your room or, you know, sunny, shady, sunny, shady, you know, when the weather is doing this shit. Yeah, that is something I sometimes do when the lighting situation is just really unstable. But as I said, there is only so much you can do and at some point it's important that it is at least consistent and the hue correct overall will give your footage a consistent look. It's a little bit like a filter. The curves enhance the contrast. This is basically just a value dependent contrast curve. You can play around with this until you have the look you prefer, but I do recommend not going too high with the cutoffs. You know, you can see it looks very moody and Instagram-y, but it stops looking natural pretty fast. So a little bit is good. It's better than having all this detail in the dark tones, unless you want that if you're doing product photography or something, or product reviews, you want that to be natural or a makeup tutorial or something like that. But if you want a little bit of a cozy look, take some information out of the low lights and also out of the highlights to make your image slightly more flat and smooth. Hope you like this tutorial. That's it.